So what are the common challenges? Many customers embark on this exercise without with an incomplete assessment. So without that, you're kind of lost halfway within the project because you find too many uh, issues cropping up. And there are customers who think of S4 as more as an ECC with just a few user interface. Like I said earlier, this is more a functional uh, upgrade, functional conversion. So you would need to have very strong functional expertise working with you. And then understanding, underestimating the custom code remediation efforts. So first thing you'd want to do is when you look at the ABAP code, you might have developed 10,000 ABAP objects. You don't have to fix all those. So get your uh, statistics enabled to figure out how many of these are actually used. So you, that'll help you prioritize what needs to be uh, remediated because it's, it's futile to go about to remediate an object that you have never used. So if you, if you have done your analysis, if you have done your preparation well enough, then the custom code remediation efforts are not as complex. Also change management and training. You'll have to ensure you have proper change management processes and policies built around it because you don't want to be pushing new projects into your uh, ECC uh, landscape while the conversion is happening. New cost centers, new companies and whatnot. If you do that, you're bound to fail because you're, you're making the S4 project happen on a very fluid, uh, not on a stable environment because things change all the time. And also again, it's more a uh, functional upgrade than a technical upgrade. So going into lessons learned. On the pre-conversion, we suggest, uh, I, I think I mentioned this before, keeping uh, doing, uh, keep a copy of your ECC development. Don't start working, converting the ECC development itself. Archive and purge data as much as possible because the more you reduce your data footprint on your source, the conversion becomes a lot easier. But on the simplification, check well ahead of time. Understand what each line, line item in the simplification check is telling you. Because each one is a data business uh, condition that will have to be met. And then copying, uh, making development as copies of prod because that's going to give you your more close uh, uh, reference to prod once you go live. On the conversion, you might have run multiple mock conversions, but that does not mean your production conversion would take the downtime on that would take exactly the same time as you did for a mock. Because you remember, uh, you should remember that you might have done your mock maybe three to four weeks ahead of running your production, and then more transaction data has gone in. So please uh, estimate that and be aware that it could take a little longer than what happens uh, in your mock. And when you run the sum tool, the more power you get to the sum tool, uh, it, it helps us because you, you are able to run parallel processing. And then uh, reviewing the simplification report again. Post-conversion, uh, things that you would look at and need to understand is the, the stack should, have, should be frozen. You should have your pre-check report and so on. The sourcing, have separate leads for cutover, data validation, your reporting. So you have each person uh, responsible for his or uh, her area. Have knowledgeable imp implementation partners work with you. And if possible, sign up for SAP customer care programs because when you're on say FPS 00, that being the first version of any S4, a lot of issues do come up and if you're able to uh, reach out to the SAP customer care through a program, it makes it a lot easier. And uh, changes, uh, whatever change you make in your development, pre-conversion or post-conversion, ensure that you capture them in transports because when you're doing your production conversion, bringing them in as transport is the right thing to do. Testing and mock conversions. Uh, have a very clear cut uh, testing strategy, testing plan, try to uh, include all the important scenarios in your testing strategies, have more mocks than you think is required, and execute uh, a full month-end test in your mock conversions, have more data validations, and uh, set mock conversion expectations. Because when you say run about four or five mocks, before you start the mock conversion, have very clear cut expectations with your partner, implementation partner, and also within your IT team on what you expect to achieve in each mock. Because the, the requirement, what you achieve in each mock might be a little different depending on how close you are to the production con conversion. Uh, again, errors and defects that come out during the conversion or as part of the testing, expect a large number of defects, 
uh, document them, have a proper tool wherein you can doc document all these defects, uh, document the solutions to those and the defect resolution.